everyone. This is Yvonne from the Somerset County Library System of New Jersey, and welcome to the first week and the first installment of the Virtual Book Lovers Tea. Every Thursday in October, I'm going to be talking about books about from a different fiction genre or a different topic, mostly from this year and a few from next year. But for today's topic, modern romance, I'm going to be talking about titles that came out late last year, early and mid this year. So why romance? You know they're gonna have a happy ending. And don't you wanna read something happy right now? I think you do. Even if you're not a romance reader, I guarantee you're gonna find something here that's gonna appeal. So first, a word about heat. So I have rated every single one of these books, one chili pepper to five chili peppers. Three Chili Peppers is your typical romance novel. Let's face it, when the, the happy couple finally consummate their love, we get all the details. From that point forward, it's more like they fell into each other's arms, and then the next chapter is the next day. So that is what I'm rating my three Chili Peppers on. So you can go back and forth from there, from your one Chili Pepper to your five. So let's start with some books that talk about the work-life balance. So these are people that are very focused on their careers and really don't have time for romance, but sometimes you just can't resist. And we're gonna start with The Boyfriend Project by Farah Roshan. Samia, London, and Taylor all discover that their boyfriend is three-timing them courtesy of London's live Twitter feed. When all three confront this guy in a trendy restaurant in Austin, they decide they're not going to let it ruin their life or their night, and they're going to set off to celebrate dumping the jerk. These fast friends decide it's time to put the whole dating thing aside and focus on something else that will actually make them happy. The boyfriend project is what they're going to accomplish with all this time they now have not dating and looking for a boyfriend. Of course, Samia knows what she wants to do. She's driven, she's focused, and that's when Daniel comes into her life. Knowing her feelings, you can understand how driven she is and how difficult it is for her to consider a relationship right now when she's so focused on her career and launching her app. I really liked these three women. They were all in need of female friendship because each one of them is so focused on their careers. I kind of liked watching these friendships grow almost as much as the romance, almost. This is a Three Chili Pepper book. Love That First Sight by Suzanne Park. Melody Jew is beyond excited to start her new job at a video game company until she has to deal with her coworkers. She knew sexism would be part of her life in this male-dominated industry, but she wasn't ready for the blatant attacks, withholding of support, and the belittling attitude of her boss and her coworkers. When she's put in charge of a female-centric video game that she pitched as a joke, all right, so this is male strippers fighting for survival in post-apocalyptic world, the man she loathes the most. The MBA intern who happens to be the boss's nephew could be the only guy that can help her make this happen. I guess this is a romance. Sure, there's sparks, but there isn't any fire. So that's my very cliched way to say that there's kissing and only kissing in this book. While the book is being marketed as a romance, it's really more about Melody and the stalking and harassment she experiences online and the misogyny and inequality of her workplace. There is a good side about this being marketed as a romance. You know it's gonna end happy and it's gonna end on a high note, and it did. The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai. Layla returns home after a disastrous relationship. She's determined to start over. And as much as she dislikes the idea of an arranged marriage, why not let her family try to find her a match? After all, she's really not doing a really good job herself. Sam needs the office space her father leased him and promised to Layla, so Sam proposes a deal. Sam will chaperone her dates as per tradition, and if she finds the man of her dreams and gets married, Sam gets the office space. If all the guys are duds, Sam will move out. So what if Layla and Sam are the perfect match? What then? 
this book turned out to be much funnier and sexier than I expected. Layla and Sam are both fully formed characters supported by an extremely quirky cast of friends, families, and coworkers. And wait until you meet the bachelors. So the Jumbotron, the small screen, and the silver screen, we've got sports stars, television stars, movie stars, you name it. We've got them all in books right now. The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. Baseball star Gavin Scott may look like he's got it all together, but when he finally realizes that his wife has been faking it for years, he handles it badly. Very badly. So badly, his wife Thea is asking for a divorce and Gavin doesn't know what to do. Obviously, he has to win her back. So in steps the book club. First rule of book club, you don't talk about book club. The most successful men in Nashville formed a book club to help them keep their wives or win over their girlfriends, and they invite Gavin to join. Gavin doesn't understand how a Regency romance named Courting the Countess is going to help him win Thea back, but at this point, he's willing to try anything. Reading about these men debating the nuances of the courtship and the required reading is fun, funny, and endearing. Three chili peppers. One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. B. Shoemaker is a plus size fashion blogger who posts all about one of her favorite shows, The Main Squeeze, which is basically like The Bachelor Bachelorette, but how there's no diversity in the show at all. So she's approached to be the next main squeeze. B is assured that the men she's going to meet are going to be diverse, and they are as far as race goes, but all but one of these guys is in runway model form. B's insecurities are at the forefront of the book because while she loves the way she looks and is very comfortable in her own skin, she knows many people don't feel the same way. She knows she's being laughed at both to her face and behind her back by many of the contestants. But as those jerks are sent home, she can't help but hope that love, real love, could actually happen on live television. It was eye-opening to walk in her heels for a while and see what she sees and deals with on a daily basis. It's a story about love and loving yourself, how it's not enough to accept yourself for who you are. You have to learn to love yourself, and you have to know deep down that you deserve the best life has to offer. Two chili peppers of heat for this one. You Have Me at Hola by Alexis Darrier. Daria. Jasmine and Liz Rodriguez is one step closer to achieving her goal of becoming a leading lady. Yes, she is the title and star character of her own television series right now, but she is looking for the big screen. There's only a few problems, and she has a new leading lady plan that is going to help her make her dreams come true. For instance, leading ladies don't end up in the tabloids for the wrong reason, and leading ladies don't need a man to make them happy. So why does her co-star, the wildly successful telenovela star, Ashton Suarez, have to be such a mysterious and gorgeous distraction? The chemistry between these two on and off screen is sizzling. You know the show's gonna be a success, and you know these two are gonna end up happily ever after. But like in or any romance novel, the road to happiness has a lot of bumps along the way. It was really neat seeing such a diverse Latinx cast filming this show in the middle of Queens, New York. If you want a very, very steamy read, five chili peppers for this one. There's great characters. There's a peek behind the scenes of a television series. So much to love here. Pick this one up. The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Melissa and Rusty Tripp are the darlings of the home remodeling and interior design world. They're wrapping up their HDTV show, they're about to launch a series on Netflix, and they're starting a book tour to promote their book about how to have a long and happy marriage. There's just a few problems, like that they hate each other. Carrie and James, Melissa and Rusty's assistants, long-awaited and deserved week of vacation is canceled as they're forced to accompany the not-so-happy couple on their book tour to babysit them and make sure that their reputation as a couple still head over heels in love isn't tarnished. As they work together, Carrie and James get closer. 
could these two workaholics finally be finding some joy in their life because they're falling in love? This is a laugh out loud fun fest that had me giggling and there's definitely a belly laugh or two thrown in there too. This is great on audiobook because the banter is meant to be heard. Three chili peppers. Opposites attract, big thing in romance novels. And here are three that do it really well. Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. After the paparazzi claimed to have found Luke drunk in the gutter again, really, he just tripped. Clients at his nonprofit threaten to pull their support for the upcoming charity dinner. Luke is sick of having his life splashed in the tabloids. He hasn't even met his rock star dad. Why does anybody care what he's doing? But they do care. And that's why Luke needs to stop his casual flings and miraculously conjure a respectable boyfriend for this upcoming dinner. Oliver is a barrister that represents criminals. He's tidy, fussy, and successful at a job he actually loves. He wants a long-term relationship, but at best, he's a serial monogamist. He would love to have a man on his arm for an important family event, but it doesn't seem to be in the cards. Enter a mutual friend of Luke and Oliver. Since they're the only two gay men she knows, and they're both in dire straits, she sets them up to be fake boyfriends. Luke and Oliver are game. Why not? These are two very insecure men that are both brimming with anxiety who can't seem to make a relationship work. Luke, because he never wants to trust anyone again, and Oliver, because he wants that connection too badly. Once the pressure is off, because they aren't really dating, the two are able to relax and be themselves together and sparks fly and opposites attract. But can it last? It's a romance novel, you know it is. Two chili peppers for this one. Beach Read by Emily Henry. January Andrews is not having a good year. She's a romance writer who has lost her belief in love and happily ever after. And she promised a book to her publisher in three months. That's why she's moved into the house on Lake Michigan, a house she needs to sell because it's a large reminder of exactly why she doesn't believe in romance anymore. Of course, her next door neighbor would be the wildly successful literary author, Augustus Everett. Turns out Gus is suffering from writer's block and a looming deadline too. January and Gus make a bet. He has to write a romance and she has to write try her hand at writing depressing literary fiction. Can they change their style? Can they write their books? Can they survive this summer without falling in love? No, they can't. Three chili peppers. Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. Blair Calloway has left her food truck behind to finally open her dream bar, buttercream and booze. Her throwback 1950s style, Decadent cupcakes and cocktails makes her Seattle bar an instant favorite. Too bad about the competition next door, the nightcap run by Ronan Knight, a complete pain in the butt. His lumberjack style of flannel every single day is enough to annoy her, but add in the loud thumping bass of the local bands and the thwack of the ax throwing, and you got enough to kind of put her over the edge. When competition threatens both businesses, Blair and Ronan join forces to attract customers. But what about the growing attraction between the two rivals? Full confession, I am not a fan of books with cupcakes or bakeries. They're usually too saccharine for my tastes. But this book also had beer and hot wings, so I decided to give it a try. And I loved it. There are sweet bites, steamy bites, even semi-pornographic cupcake bites. This is a book you'll want to savor, but just like any great meal, it's gonna be over way too quickly. You give four chili peppers for this one just because of the chemistry between these two characters. So that's it for my modern romances. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about speculative fiction. So tune in for labyrinths, interesting libraries, and even, even, the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. So hope to see you then. And until then, happy reading. Bye, everyone.